Good morning, everybody. I'm Amy Gutman. I'm chair of the Presidential Commission for the Study of Bioethical Issues, and it's my pleasure, along with our vice chair, Jim Wagner, who is president of Emory University, and um, my partner in with our colleagues here, it's my pleasure to invite you to the seventh meeting of the Commission's uh, deliberations. And this is day one of our seventh meeting. I also want to thank our wonderful member of our Commission, uh, Dr. Kucha Laparty, who is a member of the Harvard Medical School faculty for hosting us here and for the whole to the whole Harvard Medical School administration for having us, us here. I want to recognize our executive director, Valerie Bonham, who is um, our designated federal official. Val, would you please stand up so people can see you? At this meeting, we are going to focus solely on a very important charge from President Obama. That is a charge to um, respond uh, to the subject of the protection of human subjects participating in research supported by the federal government. The President asked us to conduct a thorough review of contemporary subjects protection standards. The President further asked the Commission to assure him that current rules for research participants protect people from harm or unethical treatment both domestically and internationally. We take this assignment very seriously. It was prompted by the revelation that the United States had funded STD research in Guatemala in the late 1940s that involved intentional exposure of vulnerable populations, including prisoners, mental patients, and children to STDs without their consent. The President asked us to conduct both an historical investigation into what happened in Guatemala and also a contemporary assessment of the rules and regulations governing human subjects research today. And I would add not only the rules and regulations, but the practices that actually happen on the ground today. We released our historical investigation in September and the contemporary report will be completed next month. The Commission has overseen a number of efforts to help us respond to this contemporary charge. I have spoken before about the International Research Panel convened as a subcommittee to this Commission. Uh, we had on that panel very eminent international experts in both medical and human subjects research and bioethics, um, including a group of members of this commission who, were also, who also served on the panel. The panel reported its findings and recommendations to the full commission in the form of a report, which we entitled Research Across Borders. That report was released on our website and also in print, and we published notice of the report in the Federal Register, and we took public comment on it for 30 days, all of which was enormously helpful to us. We also conducted an extensive empirical project, and that collected data from government agencies that support research involving human subjects. We asked agencies that follow the common rule for human subjects protection to give us basic information about the research they support, including the study title, the principal investigator, funding, location, and number of participants. With this information, we are able to describe to the President the landscape of human subject research supported by the federal government domestically and internationally. And we will discuss the empirical project further today in session two and indicate where it shows strengths and where it shows challenges remaining in that area. As many of you know, our work on human subjects protection dovetails very nicely with the reform work that's already underway by the U.S. government. The advance notice of proposed rulemaking and PRM, which I've learned to just roll off my tongue, <laughs> which was released last summer, reflects many of the concerns we have heard in our prior meetings and the public comments submitted to us 
about current human subjects protections and, and the system that governs it. We have put a lot of thought into the proposals in the ANPRM and we will address many of them today and in our forthcoming report. Finally, as a pre preview of coming attractions, I just want to mention that we're also moving ahead on our next project called Genes to Genomes, Collecting, Using, and Governing Genome Sequence Data. That project will address how the growing amount of collected and available genetic data raises the bar on data protection, privacy, consent, and counseling, among other issues. And we will devote the spring and summer to this subject and produce a report um, after that. And we will also begin diving into another important topic tentatively called neuroimaging and the self which will focus on advances in neuroimaging and the implications for moral and legal responsibility. So before we begin, I'd like to say a few words about how we will take comments from the audience in this meeting. It's worked very well for us in the past and we hope to, that members of the audience will participate. At the registration table um, out front, there are comment cards. Uh, we ask that you write down any comments you have on these cards and hand the card to any staff member. They're all wearing name badges and will staff members stand up please? So everyone can, so there they are, hand them to anybody and the staff will give me the cards throughout the sessions and time permitting Jim or I will read um, them aloud and and have a response from some member of the commission or a presenter. We just ask that you make the questions relevant to the session in which we are in. Um, I'd like to ask Jim Wagner to say a few words and then I'd la like to ask the members of the commission to introduce themselves. Sure, so Jim, Sure, just please. a very few words. As usual, Amy, you've covered most all of the bases. Uh, let me add my welcome uh, to all the commissioners. Welcome to our guests. Welcome to those uh, in the hall, uh, special thanks to the commissioners for all the work you've been doing uh, uh, in small groups offline. Uh, just an, an intense uh, um, effort to, to move us toward this, this meeting where we can uh, exchange meaningfully. The impetus, uh, perhaps I don't need to, certainly I don't need to tell the commissioners this, but uh, more broadly, reminding everyone the impetus for what we are doing has been the charge by President Obama, which is one articulation, it seems to me, of an even larger goal to help ensure that the way we undertake human subjects research protects, encourages, and makes fruitful what is really a selfless uh, practice of research subjects to accept medical treatments and therapies that are really intended most often not for their benefit, but for the benefit of others. So through the work we're doing, we hope to encourage a clarity and practice of ethics that complemented by a necessary and presumably minimum necessary set of regulations to ensure that subjects of research are protected and that investigators are motivated not just in response to the pressures of oversight, but rather more by genuine concerns for safety, well-being, and dignity of those who volunteer as human subjects so that regulation is understood to facilitate ethical practice rather than understood as a substitute for it. So I look forward to the exchanges we're going to have here, and I look forward to the wisdom and experience that our guests, uh, guests will bring us. And with that, I'll turn it back to uh, our chair for introductions and to start our uh, initial session. Yeah, I'd like to ask Nita to begin and have, just have the members of the commission introduce themselves. Sure. Good morning, I'm Nita Farahani. I'm an associate professor of law and philosophy at Vanderbilt University. Dan Solmacy um, in the uh, Divinity School and Medical School of the University of Chicago. Christine Grady at the Department of Bioethics at the NIH Clinical Center. I'm John Aras. I teach philosophy and bioethics at the University of Virginia. Barbara Atkinson. I'm from the University of Kansas Medical Center, the Executive Vice Chancellor and Dean. I'm Anita Allen, Professor of Law and Professor of Philosophy at the University of Pennsylvania, where I'm also a fellow in the Bioethics Center. I'm Raju Kuchalapati from Harvard Medical School. Hi, I'm Lonnie Ali. Hi, uh, Stephen Hauser from the Department of Neurology at UC San Francisco. I'm Nelson Michael. I'm an AIDS researcher at the Walter Reed Army Institute of Research. 
And I would just like to um, also thank the members of this commission for really hard and good work. We've all, um, as I've been reminded, uh, multiple times, just daily, everybody here has day jobs and they've also been working night shifts, late night shifts on really moving this pro very important project forward. The federal government as well as private industry are bound to abide by many standards fundamental to the protection of human subjects in research, including, for example, the independent review of studies and obtaining informed consent. In this session, what we'd like to focus on is um, probing whether these standards are perceived as obstacles to the researchers or as essential to what good science and what their ethical and professional standards inform them to do. In other words, is it seen and as integral to the profession to have high ethical standards of the sort that we are, as a commission, um, charged to assure the president that they are actually abided by.